What's up guys? This is Ben with Bayside Fabrication. Um, some of you may recognize me from the Faster Proms videos. Uh, I did the majority of the fabrication, roll cage, um, stuff like that on the smart car we just finished up over there. So um, I did have a lot of questions though, because uh, I brought my car in one day when we were initially dynoing the smart car. I was able to get this car on the dyno and um, that same day and give it a quick little shakedown. Uh, we did a live stream that day, and a lot of people said, "Hey, what's up with the E30?" What you know, a lot of questions about it. I've had people message me on Instagram. I'm a big E30 guy. I've been around E30s. Have I don't know how many I've had. Had a ton of them. So I'm just going to give you a quick lowdown on what this car is all about. I will post the dyno video at the end of this video, and um, yeah, hopefully towards the end of the week, I'm hoping to go to Bradenton Motorsports Park and give it a quick shakedown on the drag strip. Um, not really a drag car, but they just opened up, I guess, for their test in tunes. So I am super stoked to uh, to get this thing ripping. Um, it's an S54 motor, which is out of the E46 M3. Um, it has the five-speed ZF transmission out of the uh, E36 M3. And that's, you know, there's a lot going on. I did this car in a crazy way. Um, I actually took a E46 M3 convertible that was hit in the rear and I took everything out of it. This harness and pretty much the whole drivetrain has no idea it's an, in an E30 with the exception of the rear suspension. The rear suspension is still um, E30 rear suspension. So uh, for the body, these are all metal fender flares. Um, I was super inspired by the Volkswagen TCR cars. My buddy Nate um, races those uh, around the United States, and they have these wild um, cutouts on the front and rears. I want to do a more subtle style, so I just did a little vent. And like I said, these are all just, everything's in primer right now, and this is just a rough copy. Um, these are going to be plugs for fiberglass molds, so I can replicate them. Uh, if something ever happens, it won't be the end of the world. Because right now I have a ton of time in them. And if I put this into a wall or anything like that, I'd be super devastated. The top is stock E30 fender. And then it's pretty much cut right on that body line. And the rest is custom made. Um, doors, I shaved the moldings off. So it's just welded and filled uh, to give it a cleaner look. Side skirts, eighth inch um, B-bond. Bent, these are going to be fiberglass. I did a side exit exhaust. I will get this car up in the air a little bit so we can look under it and I can show you what's going on there. So the rear flares are reminiscent of E30 M3, but they are substantially wider. They are inch and a half, about an inch and a half wider, inch wider than E30 M3 flares would be. Um, rear bumper is a cheap eBay piece of crap that I got in trade for some transmission. Um, it's an Evo replica, but I'm gonna make it work. There's gonna be a wild diffuser coming out. Not too wild, but it's gonna be a diffuser coming out there. As you can see, and I've had a lot of people love or hate it, but I put 190E um, taillights on this car. My brother, he had a 190E that was rotting, around, rotting in his buddy's uh, yard. So I was looking at it one day and I said, dang, these taillights actually look really close to E30s. Dimension wise other than the quarter this quarter piece or this wraparound piece. I guess you'd call it Everything looked really similar size. So I measured them. These are actually within a quarter inch height wise um, from stock e30 taillights <laughs> I personally love these taillights on this car. Well, I love them on any car, especially 190Es too. But um, I think they fit really well. They're kind of, they're period correct. And, you know, it's a blend of two awesome iconic 80s cars in one. Um, so that's the taillights. Love them or hate them. I think they're cool. They're different. And I think they work on this car. Uh, wing, this is a wing I got when I also got this rear bumper. I don't know what it is. 
I don't know if it's a Harky replica or I, don't, I have no idea what it is, but it's a replica wing. I added this uh, ducktail, whale tail, whatever you want to call it, um, onto it. It's just temporarily on there. So that's that. Um, let's see what else we got. Uh, deleted the sunroof. So the sunroof, I actually just took the stock sunroof panel and put in a, I think it was a 316 piece of round stock, welded it in and fiberglassed it in. So the sunroof's deleted, the whole cassette and all that's gone. Um, we have carbon fiber hood, which I got for like 400 bucks, which was sweet. Um, we got the depot fo fog, smoked, whatever you want to call them, headlights. Um, and I'm working on the bumper right now. Front bumper is the M-Tech 2 front bumper. I'm working on this right now. As you see here, I had to cut reliefs in it because these fenders are significantly wider. Um, with that being said, this car is running 245, 40, 17s, all four corners on 17 by nine um, style 32s. So the wheels are a little heavy, but I'm running the square setup and I'm running 245s in the front, um, which is awesome. So this lip here, this is off a of Evo replica bumper. And what I'm doing now is going to be mating this to that. Uh, this is a front splitter. This is just, you know, protective coating on it. So this is going to be a black splitter. Um, this is going to be mated to this. I think I'm just going to uh, make it all one piece and call it a day. It'll be easier to do it that way. But that's what I've been working on. I haven't really been working on it lately. I've been working on roll bar orders and other things. But that's what uh, is next on the list. All right. So this is my S54 swap. So uh, if anybody, if you don't know, S54 is 3.2 liter straight six, uh, individual throttle bodies. Um, it's a pretty wild motor uh, from the factory. Some say, and I would have to agree at this point, that it's probably one of the best uh, Natchi aspirated motors that BMW ever made. Um, it was really the last uh, straight six Natchi aspirated engine in a M, M series car. So um, quick rundown on it, it's pretty much stock. When I got the donor car, it came with a bunch of dining parts. Uh, it came with um, suspension, sway bars, exhaust, a ton of dining stuff. So I think this might have a dining flash ECU. So other than that, though, uh, I made a aluminum intake, which I am going to extend down into the uh, fender well a little bit. But as of now, it works. Um, it's just sucking hot air from the engine bay. So I'd like to improve on that. Um, custom catch can. I got, the, or not catch can, I'm sorry. Uh, custom coolant reservoir. I got this at a swap meet somewhere for five bucks. So I, it's been laying around, so I decided to reuse it. Uh, Mishimoto radiator, um, MK60 ABFs. So on this car, what I did was I took the E46 firewall, cut the firewall out of the E46 and actually put it into an E30. So this is an E46 M3 brake booster, uh, reservoir, all that stuff, all the sensors for the ABS. Um, this is the ABS uh, motor itself right there. All right, let's talk about the interior and the uh, what I have going on here. This car is originally planned to be a hill climb car. I used to live in Connecticut and uh, New England Hill Climb Association. I was just gonna go up to mountains and stuff like that and you essentially race ski access roads. So I built this cage for that. So this cage is, uh, done to NASA Rally Sport specifications. So with that being said, it's pretty wild. Um, I mean, it's all inch and three quarter DOM tubing, um, 95 thousandths wall. Um, yeah, I'll just kind of give you, a, just show you what's going on with that. Um, if you, uh, NASA Rally Sport has great instructions online. They tell you pretty much exactly how they want things done and how to do them. Um, so they have show illustrations and the whole deal. So it's very simple to follow if you're a first time cage builder or anything like that and that's what you're looking to do. Um, I'll just show here. I punched through the wall here to go to the front strut tower. So there's that. Um, as you notice, this does not look like E30. That's because it's not. This is an E46 M3 dash I chopped up. Uh, this is the E46 M3 fuse box. Um, like I said, wiring harness, uh, gauge cluster, all E46 M3. Also E46 M3 steering column and pedal assembly. 
The seats I have, or I have Bamarco grip seats. These are uh, made in Poland, awesome, awesome seats. They're like 450 or 480 bucks shipped from Poland. They are all FIA certified. Containment seats, best bang for your buck. I know a lot of people run them. So this is just like hopping in an E46 M3, including telescoping and tilt wheel, which I think is a great feature, especially if you have shorter or multiple drivers. All E46 M3 uh, pedal assembly, because I, like I said, I used the firewall, so I was able to utilize all that, including the factory um, electronic uh, accelerator pedal. So there's that. Um, everything works, you know, no lights are hooked up. Uh, I don't have the fuel gauge hooked up or anything like that, but Let's see, like I said, this is a ZF five speed transmission on this. Uh, the reason I went with that it is lighter and stronger than a 420G six speed transmission, which originally came uh, in the E46 M3. So I think it was 30, 27 or 32 pounds lighter than that transmission and it's significantly stronger and they're cheaper. You can get one of these transmissions for 300 bucks all day long. Um, the 420Gs are like a thousand plus. So to me, it just made a lot more sense to do that and go that route uh, with this car. Um, it's got a 373 limited slip uh, differential on it. It's a little tall gearing, but I'm gonna just keep driving it now and see how it feels um, once we get on a real road course, see, see where we're at with everything. Like I said, I have very limited seat time in this car right now, so we're still doing a lot of testing and feeling out what's going on here. So it's a little bit of a wiring mess right now, but uh, this is just a uh, 15 gallon fuel cell, aluminum. This is a swirl pot. I'm running a o Bosch 044 pump. There's a, uh, I don't know what brand is, just some cheap lifter pump from the bottom of the fuel cell to my swirl pot. And uh, what else? We're running a motorcycle battery on this. It has traction control, um, sport mode, all that stuff. So like I said, this the whole chassis, harness, drivetrain does not know it's in an E30 is essentially how I went with this route um, or with this swap. So. Yeah, let me show you. Right. Let's start off with the brakes. E46 M3 brakes, rotors, knuckles, the whole assembly is E46. <laughs> I made it, it and modified an E30 strut tube to fit the E46 M3 knuckle. So, as you can see here, on the stock E30, this is one piece connected to the knuckle, the stock front knuckle on the E30. So I cut that off. Then what I did is I added this cap to the bottom, and then I added this stop for the for the strut tube the only thing that does is it makes this not be able to remove from this but it doesn't really matter because anything you need to service in here is you know comes out from the uh from the nut like a factory e30 would so <clears throat> with that being said this is all stuff i've built um, these are custom sway bar brackets um this is an Eibach front sway bar. These are some cheap uh, tie rod end links. Um, so I added these. These are not a factory E30, a stock E30 thing. E30 M3, they do this style onto the strut tube. So I added that. Um, these are E36 M3 control arms. These are E46 M3, I'm sorry, E46 330 CI outer tie rods. I did have to modify and shorten these because I ran out of adjustment, but I tried using the E36 um, tie rods and the diameter of this taper bolt or taper stud rather is smaller than the E46 knuckle. So I had to do that to make that work. Um, this tapered bolt and on the E36 arm is identical to the E46, so that fit perfect. Okay, 
So what I did for the oil pan and subframe is I pretty much modified the stock S54 oil pan, which is dual pickup, so dual sump oil pan, um, which is much better than a single sump uh, that most people swap to on these. They use the M50 uh, E34 pans and just do a front single pump sump rather. The problem with that is the front sump on the E34 pan hangs super low on these cars and it's real dicey. So um, this is the stock pan, but I modified it. So as you can see here, I added an expansion chamber here and I also cut and narrowed the pan here. Um, as you can see, this subframe is all custom tubular subframe to clearance that. So like I said, what this allows you to do is run, here's the main sump, the rear sump on this pan, and then the front sump up here. So it allows you to run the stock factory sumps, um, but it also, this expansion chamber I added, adds approximately a quart and a half extra capacity of oil. So you get much more oil capacity um, with that setup that I made. Um, let's see what else. Just I'm noting here, this is factory E46 M3 power steering cooler. Um, this is that, uh, this is just an eBay 25 row oil, oil cooler. So far it works great. What else are we looking at under here? Oh, the exhaust. Okay, so these are stock S54 headers cut right at the catalytic converter. And then they're two and a half inch all the way back to my side exit three inch. So I will let's see how far we can get under here. So you can just see I have a couple flex pipes we've e banded on. I have a cross pipe and then I have my, uh, my Y pipe to my muffler. So that's it. Very simple. Okay, one thing I did want to mention. Uh, you might be wondering why I made these uh, sway bar brackets. The S54 pan being rear sump, you cannot run a uh, standard E30 uh, mounted sway bar. E30 mounts to the back of the subframe, and with uh, the pan being there, you just can't do it. So the sway bar has to be flipped and moved to the front of the subframe. So I just wanted to note that in case anybody was wondering why why I had to make these uh, suffering bra or these uh, sway bar. So as the theme continues, E46 M3, E46 M3, but on the rear, I did not go with E46 M3 rear suspension. I should have, um, knowing what, I, and if I were to do it over again, I would have. It would have been more work, but it would have been, it would have been totally awesome. But I didn't, and I don't feel like doing it now because I'm already into this car for way too much time. So uh, this is h and um, race springs, Bilstein's. Um, I do have the same in front. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, the front are Eibach springs, but I have Bilstein HD shocks. But I kept the spring rates the same as the h and race to match the front. So essentially it's the same spring rate, different spring, but you get the idea. They're all h and race. I love the feel of h and race springs. Uh, they have a good stance. Um, I don't have an adjuster on here because where it sits is great. I don't need this car any lower at this point. Um, as you can see, I reinforced the stock uh, trailing arm. So I dimple dyed and braced in the stock arm. Let me get, a, get under here. It's not too dark. Okay, so I got a light here. So this here, this is the uh, lifter pump. Uh, it's off a big V8, or it's made for a big V8 carbureted car. So all we're doing here is getting fuel from the bottom of the pickup there up to the swirl pot. So, so far it works great. I've had no problems. Um, you can see I made a um, tubular frame for the fuel cell and also a uh, skid plate here. So that protects the fuel cell, and also the skid plate is going to be part of my rear, diffusion, uh, rear diffuser coming out. So let me show you how I made the rear brakes work on this. So you can see these two mounts here, those are the stock E30 positions. I didn't alter those. What I did, however, is made machine a aluminum bracket. That's about a one inch spacing, and it actually worked out perfect. A one inch spacing, 
puts the caliper out to exactly where it needs to be. So these are 318 TI hubs because they are five lug. Yeah, I had to re-drill the, uh, the locating bolt for the rotor. But other than that, that's all I had to do to, for the rotor to fit. So these just fit right on top of 318 TI hubs. And then all I had to do is space out the calipers. Now, I am going to go a dual caliper setup at some point, uh, I think. But as of this, as of this point in time, this is going to work out fine. Um, also, see, I made a little reinforcement to the, uh, to the strut mount, too. So, yeah, I have uh, adjustable camber um, and tow on the rear. Dang, did y'all see these taillights? Rice earlier. All right, y'all, that's it. So I'm sure I'm missing something here, or I'm missing a bunch of things. Um, if you have any questions, hit me up at Bayside Fabrication on Instagram or in the comments below, and I'll do my best to answer any questions you have. As far as what's next, um, I just need to button up the body. I need to get that front bumper mounted and figure it out. I need to get Lexan in the windows. Um, I need, actually need to do something immediately for this uh, driver's side window because I want to go rip this thing down the quarter mile. So I would love to do a test and tune just to shake it down, see what it does. I would love to run a high 12 in this thing. That would make me ecstatic, but we'll see how it goes. So yeah, Lexan on the windows. Get the fenders and uh, bumper and arrow and all that stuff all squared away. And then once that's done, I can paint the thing. And then it's going to be finished, I guess. But I'm sure I'll be able to find something else to, uh, to improve on in the time being. So uh, the only problems I ran into was I think I might have air in the ABS. And my traction control was coming on and off. So I want to address that. And as of right now, I'm just gonna try to pick away at it as much as possible in between orders uh, and things like that. All right, that pretty much does it for today. Um, check out the dyno videos in about 10 seconds here. Um, this car did very well and I'm very happy uh, with the results there. And stay tuned, because what's in this trailer is gonna be a super fun project. I'm going to do the whole project, laid out, recorded, video, YouTube, the whole thing. Uh, on this channel. So yeah, it's going to be a wild, it's going to be a wild one. Not like this car at all. It's going to be a whole different monster. It's going to be more of a party machine. So um, yeah, I look forward to sharing that with you. That's going to be super fun. And in the meantime, thanks for checking out my E30 with me. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, uh, tips, tricks, anything like that, I'd be glad to listen to them, glad to answer any questions you have. What the plan is today, the plan is, I was talking to uh, Jeremy over at Faster Proms. I've been doing a lot of work for him the past few months. Um, we're building the smart car, the K-swapped, K24 turbo swapped smart car, which is insane. Check him out. Uh, absolutely check him out if you haven't already. Um, but yeah, we're going to go meet up with Jeremy and Brent from PFI Speed and the boosted boys kyle and Emilio were over there and the word on the street is we're gonna go rip over at showtime uh getting some shenanigans who knows i'm a little nervous only because it's this car's first time out i've gone up and down the street like i don't know two times everything feels okay but this car is everything to me is new it's all foreign um i put it together to the best of my abilities it runs great it idles great but i haven't ripped it yet so i don't know what it's going to do under load i don't know if you know who knows all right george kind of fired up right now so we just weighed this thing and it's 2483 pounds without me in it Let's see what she makes for power. All right, guys, so George just got it all strapped down. We got our uh, wire, uh, coil wire connected for the uh, ignition and the RPM. Got my 190 tail lights because I'm a ricer. Let's see if we can make some power. What are your thoughts? where the air fuel is and uh, push come to shove we can 
modify how the mass air sees stuff by placing things inside of it to speed it up or slow it down. You know, it's going to be hard to slow it down because you have a given size. But yeah. if it's lean, we can do it. That's what it does. Got it. It takes, I don't know why, the second time it goes. It's got to be raspy. I was hoping for 300. 327, 264. That's sick, dude. That's really sick. Hey, I'm gonna run it back. I'm gonna run it back. Yeah. Not as much torque as I thought. Exhaust. It's new heat wrap. That's awesome. Hey, let's pull that map housing off and see if we can richen it up like a smidge. Take it off and then we'll put like something like a piece of cardboard, fold it over with like duct tape on it. Okay. And it'll see the higher flow and see if we can richen it up by like, I don't know, 5%. Okay. You're the man. You're the man with the plan. Recap on the numbers here. That's what we're making. All right, guys, if you like this video, like, subscribe, comment. Um, this is my first time doing something like this, so I have no idea really what I'm doing, but we can only get better from here. So I appreciate you checking out my car with me. Um, like I said, if you have any questions at all, feel free to hit me up in the comments or at Bayside Fabrication on Instagram. And yeah, have a great day and uh, keep on racing guys.